so I'm Antoine Rich from Cartocité. I'm not going to talk so much about what we do at Cartocité. Um, and Julia shouldn't be here. These two guys should be here presenting their project. And Julien is a GIS administrator at the INRAI, which is a French institute for research in agriculture, food, and environment. Uh, and uh, Stéphane Penot is my colleague at Carto Cité. And uh, he couldn't come because uh, his daughter is celebrating her birthday today. <laughs> and so Julien is uh, also a farmer. And uh, nowadays, farmers do require precise geolocation so that when they do spread crops in the field, they don't leave gaps and they don't spread twice at the same area, being crops or fertilizers. So they really need to have an accurate location when, they, when they're working. Also, uh, they may be interested in having a 3D model of the field and because they keep surveying their field effectively. And they may, a 3D model might be interesting to see whether it evolves or to study the water drainage. So it has, has a lot of usages for farmers. So Julien has been using RTK location, which is accurate location for a while, uh, but he was using pro pro a proprietary solution, and that was costing him, him a lot of money. And uh, in uh, one day of uh, 2017, in the summer of 2017, he decided to stop paying the subscription and um, start building up a, f a free and open solution for having an accurate location. On his side, Stefan is a man of uh, doing a lot of uh, pictures for OpenStreetMap. He's a mapillary enthusiast. You can see the top of his car. Whenever he's driving somewhere in front, he puts four cameras on the top of his car to make uh, thousands and thousands of pictures. He contributed more than four million pictures to, to mapillary. He's also put together this device you can see on the left-hand side, which we, we are using to map railway stations in France. And uh, that's six cameras with a GNSS antenna on top of it and a lot of electronics in it. And uh, it managed to produce th uh, sphere uh, pictures of about eight megapixels. So he's really enthusiastic in taking pictures, but he wants pictures to be precisely located because the last thing you want to do is having to fix the position of your, of your pictures. So what happened in 2016 is that the company Ublox released a first chip, uh, affordable chip for doing a RTK location. And um, also uh, an open source library was released. And uh, Stefan started to make some experiments. So he put uh, together uh, a sort of prototype uh, base station Attica base station, and we can see the antenna on top of the flower pot in the field nearby his house. And on the left hand side, he put together a, a, a rover in a shoebox, and uh, and then he decided he drove with, with that uh, around the roundabout, and that was the first result of his RTK location. So, what is RTK, by the way? I'll try to explain briefly. I'm not an expert, but uh, I think I'll give you the idea. Basically, when you're using a GPS receiver and uh, it gets signals from the satellites, but these signals cross different layers of the atmosphere, and when they do so, uh, they are delayed. And every eight millisecond of delay causes an inaccuracy of about one meter. And to compensate that, has, for, for a while, uh, as existed nowadays, the so real time kinematic positioning. The idea is that you have a base station whose location is precisely known. And uh, when you're walking around with your rover, you not only get the signal from the satellites your rover can see, but you also get the signal that the base station can, uh, the signal the base station gets from the same satellites together with the accurate location of the base station. And with all this uh, data, the rover is able to make some clever calculation by working on the signals and so on. And it's not just differential GPS, it's more than that to get a precise location. And uh, obviously, the further you go from the station, the, the, you lose some accuracy if you go away from the station. But for about 10, 30, 50 kilometers, you still have a good location. So to, have, to make sure you have a good location anywhere on your in the country. And uh, the idea is to have a, a network of base stations. 
and uh, being able to connect to the nearest base station when you do some surveying. And the idea is to have um, a NetTrip uh, N-trip caster. N-trip is a protocol for transferring RTK data. And uh, so this is a server which gets in real time the, uh, all the signal information from the base stations and broadcasts this to individuals uh, with, a, with a RTK rover to get that signal and make the, the, the corrections. And uh, when you have your, your, in order to use your rover, you need a number of things. First, uh, you need a RTK rover, which contains a chip, which does all the calculation to, fit, to correct the position. You need to have a good antenna to do that. On the right hand side of the slide, you can see uh, two uh, rovers from the company SparkFun, in, uh, which uh, is in the US. And uh, on the bottom right, that's uh, a rover, a do-it-yourself rover, which was made by Julien. You need a mobile phone to get the data the, from the caster, the data from the nearest base station from the caster. Uh, to do that, you're using a, an application, we, an entry, what is called an entry client. The data is then sent through Bluetooth to the rover, which makes a calculation, and then you get the correct location, which you can use in your favorite mapping application. It requires a, a bit of setup, and it's not so complicated. RTK has been used for by um, professionals for a long time to do some surveying, surveying infrastructure, piloting drones, uh, many, many uses, uh, usages for RTK. Uh, Julien is involved in some uh, researches, for instance, to study uh, changes in the coastline and uh, to study also wave height, wave height and sea level changes using uh, RTK. But they put together uh, some boroughs with a lot of sensors and they collect the data with this. And uh, another example, I said Julien is a, is a farmer, is uh, to have a self-driving tractors. So you have a tractor driving, driving by himself and you can do something else during that time. You still need to be in the tractor, but you can uh, look at your emails while the tractor is driving. So let's come back to uh, the story of Julien and Stefan. In 2019, Ublox, the same company, released another chip, the F9P chip, uh, with the main difference being that it supports multi-frequencies, which extends the baseline, which is a maximum distance from the base station and yourself and the rover, to 30, 50 kilometers for a reasonable price. That's 2,000 euros. It used to be more than a 200 euros, sorry. It used to be more than 1,000 euros. And uh, then Stefan decided to produce the first version of the RTK base, and, uh, which is open hardware, open source code. The source code is used to set up the, uh, the location of the base station and also broadcast the data to, uh, to the caster. The first version was just uh, piloted by command lines. The following year, which is a year of the, of the pandemic, uh, Stefan uh, found that he would uh, use the time to learn Flask, so he, he implemented uh, the second version of RTK Base, both uh, in terms of hardware, no uh, a waterproof box, box where you have all the electronics, and uh, in terms of software also, where you have a, a, a user, an HTML user interface to set up your base station, to activate some services, to log the the data and to see the location on the map, to see the signals you get from the satellites. This is a pretty well advanced uh, solution already. And during this time, Julien uh, launched the Centipede caster, which is a, a, the NTRIP caster, collecting the GNSS data and broadcasting it. And the INRAE installed the first uh, set of 12 base stations. The following year, the INRAE ordered 10 RTK base stations to Stefan. And the uh, a website was put together to document all this, the location of the base stations, and uh, how to build your own base station, or to build your own rover. And at the end of 2020, there was already 60 base stations all over France. And uh, since that date, the number of base stations have uh, grown steadily. And uh, as of today, there are 550 base stations in the Santipen network, 90% of which are using the the 
uh, RTK base plans. This has mostly located in France for now because this project started up in France. And interestingly, the majority of base stations have been installed by farmers and also by private people or various uh, French institutes like uh, people studying the, the coastline. And uh, there are a few base stations outside of France, in south of Belgium, in Hungary, in Romania, in various countries. And, uh, and there is no reason why the centipede RTK caster should only broadcast data uh, for base stations located in France. It doesn't take a lot of resources, so it, is, it can really be used to extend the network all over Europe. So why I am talking about RTK to this audience in a state of the map uh, conference? Because it's very, very useful for farmers. Uh, we do use a lot of imagery in order to map things. And uh, sometimes the imagery is not up to date. And so you don't have to wait for the imagery to map precisely new roads or new buildings, uh, what have you. And, uh, and on the right hand side, you can see uh, not just one track, but 15 tracks on top of each other that Stefan produced uh, we, when driving to work and coming back. And uh, that shows that whatever the condition, even if the weather condition change, uh, you still have a good accuracy when you, when you make an RTK track. If you want to lo locate trees, uh, RTK location is very tolerant to tree cover. And so this is an example where we survey the number of trees and we just walk around each tree and then the location of the tree was in the middle of the every little circle. In order to do that, Steph there was no base station nearby. So Stefan drove, put an antenna on top of his car, did all the setup for um, all the configuration to locate his car precisely. And, uh, and then he went off and, uh, and this is uh, this track he's surveying. As I said, Stefan is doing a lot of pictures. And the uh, last thing you want to do is to fix the location of pictures one by one. And this is something you often have to do is you, if you use standard GNSS. And uh, uh, may I precise that the, well, the idea is you get the GNSS track with RTK, which is precise, you get a picture on the other side, and then you do the correlation, which is fairly, very easy to do with JOSM, and then you get, in a, few, in a few clicks, you get your picture located precisely and oriented. <clears throat> in Carto Cité, we've put together uh, what we call the RTK 360 kit. This is basically a rucksack and with a, a GoPro Max camera on top of the head. Uh, on top of the camera, there is an antenna, a good GNSS antenna, a multi frequencies antenna, and you don't see the antenna on the, on the pictures, actually. And within the rucksack, you've got the RTK receiver, which is a SparkFun RTK Express, and the battery, which gives us enough autonomy to do surveying for a couple of days. And we've been using that to map uh, 420 railway stations in Paris. We've put together three of those kits plus a big uh, surveying device from Stefan. And uh, this, is, uh, this has been working very well and, uh, and we will not come back to normal GNSS. Oh yeah, this slide shows uh, in Paris where there are large street but high buildings as well. By the way, the picture on the left is a screenshot of Panoramax, which uh, Christian Kess will present a bit later today, which is an alternative to Mapillary. And, um, and I follow the same path working on the pavement in the same street twice, one with a no standard GNSS and the, the second time with RTK location. And uh, you can see the difference in the track. And uh, the, with RTK location, the track no longer puts you in the building on the other side of the street. And when there are little curves, this is not due to the inaccuracy of the location. This is because I had to walk around the, a bus stop or something, which I could check looking at the pictures. And uh, the nice thing with this kit is that uh, you, you not only look at pictures, but you can make a good track as well. And this is an example where there was a brand new bus station. So I've walked carefully along the curb and, uh, and using the track, I was able to 
map the, the bus platform. And when the imagery was made available, I could check that the Attica track was precise. I didn't have to go back and fix it. <clears throat> and by the way, JOSM supports NMEA format, which is one of the formats uh, you get when you produce uh, ATK location. And in this example, which is uh, Stefan driving, uh, coming to Nantes, and um, you see the, the little circles. The diameter of the circles is an estimate of the accuracy. And you see that when you go under a bridge, you lose some accuracy, but it's still correct and still pretty good. And the color shows the type of fix, whether you full RTK or just differential GPS or standard GNSS. And uh, this is good to, this gives you an indication when you upload a track in JOSM to, to check, to, to see where you go and need to check the, the location. So at this stage, you should all be willing to help and uh, contribute to this uh, new project, to this geocommon. So basically, you can set up your own base station. You can build it yourself, or this all documented um, in, uh, on the Santipen network. And uh, you can just, you, th there is a list of all the components. There is a ready to flash image if you want to flash your the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is in the base station. Or you can order it to Stefan and uh, various, um, uh, well, it's not so expensive compared to the, the, the material. As I said, the, the chip itself is 200 euros. And it won't cost you a lot of uh, money in terms of electric, electric consumption. And uh, once you get it, you need to install it. And uh, the base station is waterproof, but it's not uh, heat proof. So it was uh, be in a shaded uh, area. And uh, the antenna must be in an uh, open space area. You need to have a, a clear view all around. And uh, it should be fairly close to the base station itself. And uh, no longer than five meters. And then uh, you, uh, you have a PoE injector, which means that the, uh, the Ethernet cable is able to provide the power supply needed by the, by the base itself. So it's quite fairly simple to set up. And then what you need to do, the first step, you, when, when you've installed your base station, you need to define its exact location in the ETRS-89 ellipsoid. In France, that's quite easy because there is a service whereby you, you log data from your base station uh, for 24 hour, hours, then you send the log to the, some online service provided by the French or non -sur well, sur surveying uh, service. And then you get a report with the exact location. In other countries, well, we don't know, but in Canada, apparently there is a service which can do that worldwide. And there may be a uh, surveying institute in your country that are able to provide this service. And then you send the report, and together with two pictures of the antenna to Santiped, and, uh, the sun and your base station is visible on the Santiped network, and people can use it. Other way you can help is to make the entire project on entirely freely open source because uh, the RTK base is open source, but the caster itself, it is open source, but it's not freeware. You need to buy it if you want to install a caster, but you don't need to have so many casters. Uh, one is uh, doing the job for now. Maybe there will be several in Europe in a, in a few years, but there won't be so many. There's no need for that. And uh, perhaps more useful would be to work on the Ntrip client, which is an application you have on your mobile phone. We are, we've been using the Le Febur, uh client, which is not open source, but it works pretty well. And there is another one, which is Bluetooth GNSS, which is open source, but uh, it's been found not so reliable, and the user interface is not so good. So maybe some people with skills to develop uh, that sort of thing could help uh, make Bluetooth GNSS better. Uh, the documentation is only in France for now, in French for now, so feel free to go and translate it in your country, in your language, and uh, spread the word and talk about it to, uh, to uh, your fellow uh, mappers. Here, here are some links if you 
want to find more information about this, there is a forum, there is a documentation, there is a Telegram channel, an RTK base site to, well, to contact Stefan if you want to set up your own base station. And this is it. Uh, if you have questions, I'll try to answer them, <laughs> but I'm not the expert. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Actually, I have a quick question for you. Perhaps you're, you won't be able to uh, answer it. How on earth does Stefan find time for this farming? Oh. <laughs> Stefan is not doing the farming. There's Julien doing the farming. And uh, I don't know. Uh, he's also a searcher for, at the University of La Rochelle. Um, and, but who on earth Stefan finds time to do all these things? I don't know. To, uh, and to tackle new technologies like making some chi some chips, that sort of things. I don't know. Any other question? Oh, Hi. Um, Ublox has a, a, another kind of RTK service that uses um, satellite data from uh, some other satellite constellation so that you don't have to use an RTK base station. Have you guys tried that? Mm, no, I mean, th this RTK is using satellite constellation and uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what you're talking about, effectively. Something it's, you can, just um, with satellites. It's providing, uh, with the correction, it's providing the correction signal um, from some geostationary satellites so that you don't have to connect to a oh. RTK base station. Okay. Yeah, someone respond. Yeah, okay. the, so the, the response from someone in the audience is that it costs 2,000 euros per year, 200 euros per year, which is not so bad, but uh, you have to pay. The difference with this is that it's entirely free. Well, you need to buy the, the rover if you want to use it, but accessing the Centipede RTK caster is free. Yeah. Uh, how does one register their RTK base so that it's available for others to see. You send an email to the uh, Santibet administrator with a report uh, for the location, which gives the location of your base, with a couple of pictures for, of the antenna to show that uh, it's, uh, there is nothing hiding the antenna, so they can get as signal from the, as many satellites as possible. And then they check it's okay and, and add uh, your uh, your base station to the network. So that's quite straightforward. Mm. <coughs> there has been some tests by uh, some company like uh, GRDF in France to, to check the accuracy of uh, Centipede network and is the right, they were quite impressed, including in height, and particularly in relative height is centimeter accuracy as well, maybe absolute Absolute height, maybe might be a bit more, but no more than ten centimeter. Uh, for the people who want to check their accuracy, I have here the nearest uh, geodetic point. It's mm. uh, five kilometers from here. Yeah, sadly, I would have come with a kit, but sadly there is no base station nearby. There are some in the south of Belgium, but. Uh, I guess that's mostly a matter of translating the documentation. Uh, so you're welcome to do it. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you.